Good day to you one and all. It is I, Justin Hawkins, and this is Justin Hawkins Rides Again. So, you guys um, are probably aware of this uh, artist called John Mayer. Um, today I'm going to talk about um, a performance of his, uh, of a song called Last Train Home. It's the ballad version, and it says so in uh, brackets. The, the only time I've ever seen that before, it was... Um, no more lonely nights, never be another... From, um, give my regards to Broad Street, it's the, or Broadway, or, I've forgotten what it's called now. The, um, it's a Paul McCartney solo thing, but they did two interpretations of the same song for the soundtrack of that particular movie. Um, and uh, the ballad version was the one that had Dave Gilmore playing guitar on it. Brilliant stuff. Anyway, so this is the Last Train Home ballad version, uh, released in 2021. It's an extraordinary performance, and I'm going to talk you through it and explain why I think it's so good. <laughs> Justin Hawkins rides again, again. Right, so John Mayer is an American singer, songwriter and guitar player. He is regarded as one of his generation's most accomplished musicians. Um, I remember seeing John Mayer doing like a... It was, it was in um, CSI, but the original CSI, you know, the one that was set in uh, um, Las Vegas in America. Um, and uh, he was doing a performance and all the sort of cast of uh, CSI were having a night off and listening to John Mayer and grooving on that one about waiting on a world to change that, that one he did dud that's the past tense of done um, he's released eight studio albums um, when it comes to the guitar John is most inspired by Marty McFly's Johnny B. Good performance in the film Back to the Future solid solid bit of soloing there when he was 13 he became addicted to the guitar and his father rented an acoustic guitar for him and his brother his love for stevie ray vaughan the legendary american songwriter started when he was 13 after his neighbor gave him vaughan's cassette the clarity hitmakers love runs so deep that he even inked srv which is uh, stevie ray vaughan's initials obviously on his body it's not clear from my research whereabouts on his body it is i would imagine where would you put that? You could do it here, couldn't you? SRP. That'd be nice. Uh, however, the police still remains his favourite band. The singer was diagnosed with severe tissue inflammation on his vocal cords, known as granuloma, in the fall of 2011. I didn't even know this. Um, he had to go months without speaking due to his condition. After nearly two years off the radar, he returned to the stage in January 2013. Extraordinary stuff. I actually... Um, you know that South by Southwest in... Um, in te in Austin, Texas, in the Americas, um, sometimes they do those things where, like, uh, a prominent artist will sit down and, and it'll be like a Q and A or a, a sort of live interview in front of an audience. And I, I went to see his um, talk like that, and I didn't know anything about his music really or him as a person. He blew me away. Like his insights into the business was were really interesting, and I thought, you know, before I even sort of established an opinion of him as a musician, I really appreciated him as a music based personality he's got some really really um he's got some opinions i just totally he was he was saying stuff about the music trade and i was going yeah that's what i think as well brilliant so basically him and i are on the same page it's probably because we're both blues men at heart yeah that's probably what it is and um, critics often point to how safe his music is despite how incredible a musician he is um music writer steve balton commented on this dichotomy saying john mayer is one of the sharpest and savviest musical minds you will ever encounter, and added, while many have found reasons to dislike Mayer since the beginning of his career, he is the, a consummate musician's musician, an artist who has been embraced by Eric Clapton, Stevie Wonder, and Buddy Guy, among others. Yeah, I mean, glowing recommendations from some of the legends of the blues and music spheres. But um, he's, I think he's got two existences, doesn't he? He has like the, the blues trio thing where he's just doing brilliant blues rock um and he's got the other stuff which is probably more like mainstream pop writing i suppose um with a bit of a soul tinge i'm gonna watch this video because um I, one of my patrons and the link to my patreon is in the description here um told me about this song and and asked me to sort of go through it with him and uh i was startled by the subtlety of it watch, so let's have a watch and i'll show you what i'm talking about You know when you do like a music video and then the director says to you, right, so lads, um, we'll have you walking in to the area where you're playing. 
And then you do it and invariably you just walk like this. Because you just you know, you just feel really self conscious and it's not a natural thing. John Mayer might be the triple threat in the sense that he can he can sing, he can play guitar, he can probably Yeah, okay, sing, play guitar, and he can walk into the uh, performance area on camera without looking totally awkward. In a nutshell, that's what acting is, walking without feeling self-conscious. If you can do that, you're an actor, I think, right? Well, there's probably more to it than that. Just, not to disrespect the noble um, profession of acting. <coughs> Some of my best friends are thespians. Straight in there, cans on. No. Because when I put the cans on, I, <laughs> I always sort of feel obliged to say something like, oh, better put the cans on. And then, do, you know, just make a production out of everything. But he's not. He's just walking in, seemingly unaffected by the occasion, gets his cans on, puts on his Pepto-Bismol pink guitar and gets rocking. Now, I've got an opinion about his guitar that some people are going to find upsetting. This guitar that he's playing here... Um, the body of it is this Pepto-Bismol pink kind of strat, normal strat, uh, the rosewood neck. And then the headstock suggests that it's going to be one of those sort of like a PRS or something like that. Those, those guitars are so beautifully made. I mean, they're, they're brilliant guitars. But for me, they might be too good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's sort of, I find it challenging to have a guitar like that and get it to do anything raucous. Uh, and, you know, you're always in control of that thing. Excitement when it comes to guitar playing, for me, is not quite being able to handle <laughs> the instrument in your, in your, in your hands, really. I, 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 like, I like the idea of just fighting. The fight! And I'm, that's such a... I know I sound like a fucking hippie when I say that stuff, but I actually believe it. I think, like, the Gibson Les Paul is a really difficult one to beat because if you're standing in front of an amp, it's fucking hitting you in the face pretty hard, and if you're not really vigilant, you're going to get a lot of feedback. It's not going to stay in tune very well. But it's so exciting and the tone of it's just like, wow, this is what guitar playing means. Um, the, this, this guitar that he's got here is for a totally different um, objective, really. And it's to, do, it's to do with, like, subtlety and dynamics. Um, it needs to be perfectly in tune to pull off the things that he's doing. Um, and all the excitement has to come from the fingers. It's, it's actually like, it's a scalpel. Whereas I think the, the Les Paul is a pen knife, you know? Gets the job done, it's pretty cool. But um, you wouldn't really want to be doing um, major operations or anything that involves kind of delicate incisions with it to extend the um, surgery analogy f way too far. <clears throat> so if you listen to that strat sound he's got there, have a look. I'm going to just zoom in on his pickup a little bit there. Yeah, he looks like he's on about... That's a five-way pickup selector because there's three free, free pickups um, that you can choose from. The one that's nearest the neck is going to be the one that sounds bassy. The one that's sort of near the bridge is the one that sounds trebly and rocky. The one in the middle kind of gives you that twangy strat thing. And then there's some other positions between the middle and the neck and the middle and the bridge that can do some really unique kind of... Um, permutations of of those of those pickups and he's chosen like i think second position so it's between neck and middle which has given him a bit of a mark knopfler vibe actually now the thing about mark knopfler is that you know the the way he plays it's, it sounds like a subtle person a, a subtle human voice it's just it's, you know you need to be able to control that to to get something worthwhile out of it and John Mayer does exactly that. Watch this. So let's have a look at what he's playing on. So he's in E, E major. Um, so a lot of what he's doing is going to be like, um, but it might also be like some of the. Uh, Some of the sort of pentatonic, but from the C sharp minor pentatonic, uh, which is the relative minor of the E. 
And what I'm fully expecting him to do is at some point to add some attitude and bluesness to it, he's going to transpose this um, sort of pentatonic scalary that he's using um, in the relative minor to the actual um, key of E, but he'll be playing like stuff, licks that are in E minor, he'll be bending up to, to majorize the stuff that's on the thirds. Because that's what he does, and he does it brilliantly. Um, he's, a, he's an excellent lead guitar player, watch this. So if you listen to that, that's just the, the major scale. It's hard to get up there with this guitar, actually. Ah! God, he's awesome, isn't he? It's so good. This is like, um, there's a lot of compression on his sound, I think, which sort of allows him to plays really gently and and the notes still sing out and it, it's, you know you can feel that there isn't the same intensity as when he's really hitting it but uh, you're still getting the note straight into your heart hey, you wanna that's nice if you wanna if you wanna roll me, then you gotta roll me all night long. I love that. And you gotta roll me all night long. No, no, no. It's the sort of thing that people would put in as a, as an ad libby kind of, as a, I don't know, as a way of expressing. But he goes, whoa! He really luxuriates on the mordant. If this was like a, a Bon Jovi or you know one of the sort of bigger rock things, he'd be going. If you want to use me, there'd be a guy standing on a mountaintop in a billowing shirt, sort of offering a, a harmony just a third over. Watch this. If you want to use me. So, John, if you're watching this and you need somebody to stand in a billowing shirt on a mountain while you're singing the ballad version of Last Train Home, hit me up. You gotta use me till I'm gone. Till I'm gone. Yeah. Counter melodies provided by Pepto Bismol Pink PRS Strat. Fucking awesome. And I think that's a Juno 60. I've got one of those upstairs. Good work. And tasteful keyboard play in there as well. Brilliant. Not a fallen angel. And this bit I always thought like the only thing that could improve it would be like if there was an English guy doing some sort of counterline, not rapping, but like micro, um, what's it called? Dramatic monologues. So. Not a fallen angel. I am. I just fell behind. Well, that's your fault, mate. I'm out of luck and I'm out of time. Speak for yourself. If you don't want to love me, let me go. To live by. Those are words to live by. This is a great blues phrase. I love it when they do a bend up and then, like, they hold, hold the note that that's above the one that they're bending up to and then it sort of harmonizes and one of them you can put a bit of vibrato on the other one you, you don't you just leave it there isn't that lovely it's a real blues thing but he when he plays it he kind of on this on this occasion he's playing it and it kind of like dampens the original bend up tasty here comes the big solo he's, he's gone to a sort of more saturated sound here Now, this is what I was talking about at the beginning. Um, so now he's transposed these um, pentatonic sort of movements that were on the relative minor. Now he's in E minor, but playing over like something that's still essentially in A, E major, sorry. So you know it's minor because he's hitting this G, which is the, the third note in a uh, minor scale, if the first note is E. <laughs> Then he goes back to E major. I like that phrase. Yeah. Oh, I love that. He 
hits this chord mid solo. So when the when the key of the track goes goes to the A, he finds himself here, and that just sounds like flamenco or something. So he's bringing in some really interesting sort of influence from completely different sp- spheres of the music world. such a simple arrangement but he's he's doing that thing that Mark Knopfler does where like he's he's got like a a fairly straightforward chord sequence I mean it's recognisable because of the way the the riff moves you know that but within that simple set of chords uh, he's doing he's showing us a million different ways to melodically plot a path through that and this is very Mark Knopfler um, and as you know I'm a huge fan of Knopfler anyway so I suppose I'm a huge fan of John Mayer what <laughs> what come at me come at me I mean look at the way he's dressed as well white t-shirt um, sizable pendant on a longish chain dark colored jacket and jeans I'm telling you I'm a blues rock man and you know what I always have been so what He nearly did one of these ones that I love. He bends up to this note, the major third, I suppose, and then strikes the fourth and fifth, but he's bending up to it. So it looks like his fingers are only doing this stuff. But actually, and this is a guy who's got complete command of his fretboard. He knows, he knows all the the roots, um, which is the thing I always talk about, really. Like, I saw a, a tutorial video that John Mayer made, and it was he was talking about how he thinks about the key of a song. Like, so, for example, if it's E, and you're up on the 12th fret, he sees that as the equator, and sometimes he operates north of the equator, and sometimes he operates south of the equator. And so having that anchor and knowing exactly where the line is helps him to go wandering off and exploring these melodic uh, possibilities. And then when he gets stuck, come back to the equator. But when I first saw him talking about that, I thought he's either joking or he's kind of like oversimplifying or being very reductive. I think he's a much, he's a much better guitar player than that. I think he, he knows where all the positions are. And... Uh, he uses them in, uh, in inventive ways, I think. And this, <coughs> so it bears, it bears watching a long solo that's basically just in E major. Um, yeah, John Mayer. And he's doing that mouth thing here at um, 420. I do that sometimes. And then, but what I do is um, I mouth the word potato. So it's like... That's what I do. But it gets a bit difficult when you're doing this kind of thing, like, um, um, and I'm not sure if you can actually do potato in that instance. You have to find a fiddly diddly, I just say fiddly diddly d a lot of the time. But uh, anyway, I hope you're enjoying this. Um, I've talked about this enough now, but uh, John Mayer, um, I think he might be one of those sort of divisive characters, um, again, like uh, Matty Healy, someone like that, you know, he's, he's got this vibe about him. An assuredness, maybe it's cocksuredness. Um, but personally, I think he's totally justified. <laughs> you know, he's a great musician, he really is. So um, check out some of his live blues rock performances. And uh, let me know what you think in the comments section below. And also, if you get a chance to sort of um, listen to an interview uh, quizzing John Mayer on the nature of the music trade itself, he's got some interesting and valuable insights that I've definitely learned from and agreed with over the years. So uh, check him out. Nice one, guys. Justin Hawkins rides again. Again. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, watch one of these two videos, and for God's sake, keep coming back. Nice one, guys.